going on everybody car guy v8 here with another video and behind me we have a 1979 oldsmobile cutlass and today we're going to be walking around it taking a look at it and going for a drive in it and we're here with my buddy clay who owns this car so i'm going to step behind the camera and follow him around he's going to tell us all about it all right it's like evan said this is a 79 uh oldsmobile cutlass calais model and it is a Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais with a Hurstholz package. Now, in 1979, they made 2,500 of these Hurstholz cars. They uh, they were offered in two color schemes. One of them is what you see here, the white with the gold on top. The other color color scheme was black on bottom, gold on top. So it was a black or a white car. Uh, these were specially built by I can't remember the outside source that Oldsmobile sent them to, but the cars were pulled off the Oldsmobile assembly, assembly line and then sent off to an outside contractor who took care of the gold paint on top and they took care of all the nice little Hearst emblems and all. And uh, anyways, to go into the Hearst Olds, 1979 Hearst Olds, Olds models, this was a package offered on a Calais version of the Cutlass. It was, uh, of course, 1979. There were major issues as far as uh, the gas crunch, uh, oil embargoes, gas lines. So economy was a major issue. 1979 domestic vehicles, there, there was uh, very seldom would you find an actual, what we would consider a performance car. So when you look at these 1979 Hearst Olds models, this is basically a sticker package. Made the car look good, but they ran just as good. Sometimes not even as good as the regular Olds Cutlasses that they offered. 79 Hearst Olds Cutlass uh, came with the gold stripe right there. It's a W30 package automatically when you get the Hearst Olds package on these cars. Uh, now I mentioned about the performance earlier. One thing about these cars was it was the only, <clears throat> and it wasn't considered a G-body in 1979, but they are, they were, they were later to become a G-body in 82. So I think it was considered an A body in 79, but it's still the same stuff. So I'm just gonna call it a G body for today's purposes. One thing about the 1979 Hearst Olds was it came with a 350 cubic inch engine, which is the only G body that was offered with a 350 after our 79 and above. Uh, there was actually a 78 El Camino that they offered a Chevy 350 in. That was the only year. 79 Hearst Olds Cutlass came with an Oldsmobile 350. So it did offer some little bit more performance than what you might have seen. But I'm gonna point out again, it's got the W30 sticker. It's got uh, these first Olds medallions on the side. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think these cars came with another HO emblem on the rear truck. But uh, this, this area right here was painted a gold color. This was white. And you can still kind of see the basic layout of the color scheme on these cars. But the most interesting thing these cars came with was in 1979, they actually came with a Hurst dual gate shifter. They came with a turbo 350, so it was a three-speed automatic, but it came with, I can't remember if they called them a his or her dual gate. I think they're all underneath the same thing, but it was a Hurst old shifter. And of course, I've done away with it on this car because I've got an overdrive transmission. But it was a slick little uh, setup. It had a little gate that you that you moved over to if you wanted to pop that sucker in manual. And it was a really nice little factory setup from Hearst <clears throat> from Hearst shifters, Hearst transmissions, Hearst aftermarket shifters. Uh, as far as uh, anything else these cars came with, I think that was basically it. So for the most part, it was just a sticker package, an image. It was more image than it was actual performance. However, they did. It was the Calais, which was the Oldsmobile's performance model of the Cutlass. Of course, they offered Cutlass Supreme, uh, Cutlass Supreme Brome, Cutlass Calais, which was the sportier model. Bucket seats were included, center console, heavier duty suspension, and uh, the W30 package actually includes what they call the F41 suspension, which is a little bit more heavy duty, better handling, a better ride. So that, that's pretty much what these cars entailed. And like I say, there were 2,500 of them made. And my numbers aren't exact, but I'm thinking there were 1,200 of the white and gold version. And that would leave 1,300 of the black and gold. So the white were a little bit more rare than the black, but on occasion you still see them pop up on eBay and I guess Marketplace. And there was actually a black one here in town up till about a month ago when he ended up actually selling the car. So 
they never did they, I don't think they ever really caught the eye of the collector until here it is and 30 years 30 almost 40 years later it is 40 and it? yeah it's over 40 years now collectors are starting to kind of pay attention to them so it's a neat car I've gone through the process of uh, doing an LS swap on this car when I got the car the guy was drag racing it he had run a uh, small block Chevy in a big block Chevy he had gutted the car uh, so I just took it from there I had a LS setup I was wanting to swap over so I did the LS swap on this car so it's like I told you before I'm still running the 4L60 on this LS swap and we're going to do I'm, I'm gonna show them my swap show them show what all I got in the swap this is just a bone stock 4.8 out of a Chevy 06 model Chevy Silverado this is a budget build this was done very low cost and uh, just take a look at it. it's a 4.8 out of a 06 model Chevrolet the only the only uh, enhancements it's had it has are the exhaust I ran I run headers on it with a true full dual exhaust on it uh, it's got a good little tune on it of course it's got a little bit for your flowing intake I'm running factory cam I'm running factory injectors uh, it's the 06 so it has the drive-by wire on the throttle setup I'm running an electric fan uh, but the little car of course it's a heck of a lot low, uh, lighter than the 06 Silverado so the 285 horses what it was I believe it was rated at maybe 295 it makes the car run pretty good I mean it feels good in this little car considering what it is a bone stock 4.8 anyways the swap, as far as doing the swap on this G-Body, it's been done thousands of times. You can find all kinds of people on on uh, YouTube who've done this swap. It's a very common swap. One thing about the G-Bodies is you can put anything, any motor, it'll fit down in here. And you can figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> Uh, 
but it has the Gen 4 internals, which is your heavier duty internals. That's your thicker rods. And I can't remember what else it is. But one thing about the 4.8, it's still running. Here, I'll hit it from my dead side. Get a good idea. Set ups for rally racing. 